The traditional wedding ceremony has a line about staying together till death do us part. So there's a hint of death even in a so-called life-affirming event, which makes the idea of getting married at a funeral home seem just a little less bizarre. Mark Albert is here to explain. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Fewer people are going to funeral parlors for burials and services these days, so that's posing a grave threat to mortuaries across the country. And faced with their own mortality, funeral homes are diversifying. Outside Indianapolis, you'd be forgiven for questioning your senses. Cars file past the stately Flannery Buchanan Funeral Center sign, the 70,000 solemn graves, and the somber pallbearers loading a casket into a black hearse. But once the guests arrive in their Sunday best, they aren't here for a burial, but a bride. Thank you so much. Rachel Pippin's wedding day at this funeral home conjures up anything but sorrow. When Pippin saw the venue, the fountain, the marble floors, and the soaring rotunda with a chandelier, she says she laid to rest her childhood dream of being married in a church. Chandelier sold me. <laughs> the chandelier? Like, yes. The headstones didn't scare you away? Not at all. Pippin is a nurse, <laughs> just like her mom before her, and neither gets squeamish around the dead or the in-laws. We love it. You love it. We love it. But it's not the church that you had hoped for. No, but whatever my daughter wanted, it was fine. More couples like Pippin and groom Mike McCullough are looking for less formal, more memorable, and cheaper options to say, I do. A recent survey found nearly 40% of couples spent under $10,000 on their wedding last year, less than half the average cost of $26,000. At the same time, church membership is declining, with nearly one out of every four people now saying they're unaffiliated with any religion, up 40% since 2007. That gives funeral homes a huge opening. They need the help. The death rate is at historic lows and life expectancy is rising, along with the cost of a funeral, up 29% in the past decade. So we're standing on the dance floor right now uh, for this wedding ceremony. Tomorrow there could be an urn right here, a casket for a funeral service? Absolutely. Bruce Buchanan, the fourth generation of his family in the funeral business, didn't want to write his own epitaph. Did you feel as though your business had to change and adapt to survive. Yes, a lot of funeral directors want to keep things the way they have been, where the public is saying we want something different. So Buchanan's partners opened this $10 million community life center and soon built two more nearby. Events other than funerals are now 20% of their business. This year, they've hosted 120 non-traditional events, including two high school proms, quinceaneras, business meetings, breakfast with Santa, and 60 weddings, which can cost less than half of a traditional venue. We are getting weddings on all of the key weekends throughout the year. So if I called and asked for next weekend, you may be booked? No, we're booked uh, and don't ask for next June. Next June? Oh yeah. June of 2016, oh, yeah. you're already booked. I'm pretty sure we're booked. It's worked out very well. When you found out the wedding was going to be in a funeral home, what did you think? They were crazy. Yeah. You thought they were crazy? <laughs> Yeah. Your partner in life. After some life. initial doubt, Rachel Pippin's bridesmaids were sold. Would any of you get married in a funeral home after this? I would get married either. again, I would do it. Yeah, it makes it's it something it's people remember exactly. forever. And these are the hands that are there to give you strength when you need it. It does go to show that it doesn't matter where you're at when you get married. You're with who you want to be with for the rest of your life, and you have your family and friends around. It, it doesn't matter. The McCullough's invited 211 guests, but we're not sure how many souls actually showed up. At a funeral home, of course, you can never be quite sure. And just in case, the bride and groom put out a candle for the dearly departed. We do know an angel was on hand. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Tell The Reverend Angel Bodenhamer. What does a reverend name Angel think about a wedding in a funeral home? I personally think that we've gotten away from it. I grew up in a very rural town um, here in Indiana, and everything happened at our church. The funerals, the parties, the weddings, everything happened there. One, two, three. Regardless, vows only promise until death do us part. But that may not be long enough for funeral homes, which are hoping you'll decide love really is forever. Mr. and Mrs. Michael McCullough!
Isn't this just a scheme not to just get customers for life, but for eternity? <laughs> I don't know. Can I, uh, can I uh, trademark that? I don't know. <laughs> this may just prove that branding really is immortal. A survey by the National Funeral Directors Association found that just in the past three years, the number of funeral homes building community centers has grown by two-thirds. What do you put on the invitation, Mark? So here's the invitation for the McCullough's wedding. It says it's at the Community Life Center. Okay, so wow. nowhere does it say it's at a funeral, funeral home. So literally you go there, here's the contract for your wedding, here's the contract for later in life. And, I and, mean... Well, exactly. We asked if they give discounts. So package uh, deals? Package deals. Wow. Yeah. Quite interesting. Great Quite story, nice. Mark. Thanks. All right, Mark Albert, thanks so much.